The instrument, the beauty of it, took hold of his soul as a young boy, and it never let go. Lessons were extremely expensive, and so um, my, my, my family could not afford lessons, and so I worked odd jobs. I worked in McClendon Hardware. I worked at Ticketmaster, Burger King, to pay for my lessons. Dr. Quentin Morris built his life around the sounds he could coax out of a violin. Black guy playing the violin, yeah. was that an unusual no. thing? How, how many black violins do you know? Not very many. <laughs> Not very many. At that time, me either. <laughs> and what a wonderful professional career he has had. That's him playing at Carnegie Hall. sounds it's a beautiful instrument when played well he and his violin traveled the world great halls great symphonies great performances what's your relationship with that man oh Joseph Boulogne is the Chevalier de Saint-Georges the painting is of the Chevalier de Saint-Georges a contemporary of Mozart's and for Quentin a source of inspiration he is credited as the first black violinist and composer to have a major career. The portrait was painted by one of his students. They show up here to Hope Church Northwest in Renton, and they play. Let's try that again. Quentin Morris listens with his ears and sometimes even his body. Yeah, what do you think of uh, actually listen? And he teaches where we're at intensely. So instead of getting so high in the bow, try to get a little bit lower. For months, Eden Paulos has been preparing for something extraordinary. Spillers has been working towards it, too. And the same goes for Madison Cole. Okay, so I think we just solved that chord, right? Six years ago, Quentin started a thing called Key to Change. I thought, okay, I'll create this violin school, essentially, where kids can come, receive a high level of music instruction, but they won't have to pay a really high amount of money. Good. Key to Change is for kids with no musical programs in their schools, kids whose families don't have the money for violin lessons, kids that don't have teachers in their neighborhoods. And look what has happened. Our program is mostly supported by individual contributions. That is how we are able to provide scholarships. And that thing they've been working towards, the extraordinary thing, it happened here the other night, the Performing Arts Center in Renton. I'm nervous and excited, but mostly excited. These will be moments that will live with them for the rest of their lives. This is a really, really big deal. I've never performed in like, um, I've never had a performance this huge. Make sure everything fits, everything works, and you'll be fine. Pretty big deal. It feels like the biggest night of my life. I made my professional debut at Seattle Symphony when I was 30. Our youngest student is making her debut at 14. And just play and have fun, okay? Rock and roll, play to the back of the hall. All three girls got up in front of a crowd in front of the Seattle Symphony Orchestra and poured their hearts out. <laughs>
they've earned it. And then they understand the value of hard work. They understand the value of perseverance. They understand the value of discipline. This organization is about access to music and instruction, a chance to shine for some kids who otherwise wouldn't have one. On this night, Dr. Quentin Morris had every right to be proud of himself and his organization and his path in life, but also of three young girls, Eden, Abby, and Madison, who just learned that in this life, anything is possible.